In this video, we are going to look at the force needed to stretch or compress a spring and the work done exerting this force and displacing the spring. So consider a horizontal spring, which is in this diagram attached to a wall on the left so that the natural resting state of the spring is here. We'll call this equilibrium. It's like the natural length of your spring. Now, if you've ever taken a spring and stretched it or compressed it, you've probably noticed the following behavior. And this is summarized as Hooke's Law. The amount of force you need to stretch a spring increases the farther you displace it from its natural equilibrium length. Since the force is proportional to the displacement, what we can say to get to Hooke's Law for springs is that the force needed is proportional to the displacement where here in SI units, force is in newtons and displacement is in meters. If two quantities are proportional in mathematics, then we can set this up as an equation where we have the force needed to displace the spring by x meters is equal to a, a constant of proportionality times that amount of displacement. Here, this constant of proportionality k is called the spring constant. You might also be wondering about how different springs are easier than others. For example, if you have a plastic slinky, it's pretty easy to stretch it out. But if you have like a thick metal coil, it's a lot harder. That is something that's a property of the spring and it's included in the spring constant. So something like a thick metal coil is going to have a higher K value than a plastic slinky. Okay, so for the rest of this video, what we are going to do is look at two examples where we will think about this force equation. We'll find the value of K for two different springs. And then we will also talk about the total work done displacing a spring. In this example, we are told that we need five newtons of force to compress a spring 30 centimeters. With that information, can we determine how much work is done stretching the spring 50 centimeters? The first remark I'm going to make here is that we wanna work with our standard SI units, newton for force, joules for work. So where we have 30 centimeters, we'll change that to 0 0.3 meters. And then when we stretch our spring from equilibrium outwards, instead of calling that 50 centimeters, we will call that 0 0.5 meters. We are only going to do two examples in this video. So what I would like for you to do first is pause and work out an equation for the first sentence. Forget about work, just focus on that first sentence. How would you set that up with Hooke's Law? Let's take that first sentence and write down an equation for it using Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law tells us that the force we need to displace our spring by x meters is equal to the spring's constant, the spring constant k, times that amount of displacement. So force is k times x. We're given two of the values in this equation in that first sentence, and then we can use those two values to solve for the third. So in particular, on the left, we know that in one particular context, we need five newtons of force. And that context is when we displace our spring by 0 0.3 meters. So we can set up an equation for K like this. This tells us that for this particular spring, the spring constant is going to be K equals five divided by 0 0.3, which I think looks a little better if you multiply the top and bottom by 10. So I would prefer to write this as 50 thirds. Then the unit here I haven't mentioned, but the unit would be Newtons per meter. Okay, so for this particular spring, the force we need to displace it by k meters is 50 thirds times the number of meters. This is a varying force. So in order to compute the work done, we're going to set up an integral. The work done, moving the spring, and I'm gonna talk about these bounds in a second. So let me go ahead and write down the bounds for this example, and then we will revisit that. So my lower bound is going to be zero, starting at equilibrium. And then my top bound is going to be 0 0.5, because we want to take our string and stretch it, stretch it 
50 centimeters beyond equilibrium or 0 0.5 meters. Then in a varying force situation, the work is the integral of the uh, function used to model the force. So we're gonna integrate 50 thirds X with respect to X. So that's the heart of the problem really is setting this up. Let's go ahead and evaluate it. So we're going to do power rule here. This is going to be 50 thirds times X squared over two. Plug in top and bottom bounds, bottom bound is zero, top is 0 0.5. So just to finish this out, that's going to be 25 over three. And then 0.5 squared is a quarter uh, minus zero. So one fourth minus zero is what's inside the parentheses. So we're left with 25 over 12 joules. That would be the unit for work. Okay, that finishes the problem, but let me say a little bit more about the bounds. The bounds here are relative to equilibrium. So if you're starting your motion from equilibrium, that bound is zero. If you're going out 0.5 meters beyond equilibrium, then your top bound would be 0.5. If, however, you're starting one meter beyond equilibrium and going out three meters beyond equilibrium, it would be one and three. And that's similar to the next example. So let's look at our second example. In this exercise, we have an eight foot long spring. We are told that the work done stretching it two feet beyond its natural length was three foot pounds. Notice here we're in American units. Given that information, can we figure out how much work was done stretching the spring an additional two feet from a length of 10 feet to 12 feet? Okay, just like in the previous exercise, what I would like for you to do at this moment is pause, take those first two sentences and see if you can write down a mathematical equation for those ideas. Go ahead and take this problem as far as you can and then I will come back and we will work out the solution. In the last example, our first piece of information was about force. Here it's about work. So the equation we're going to write down will look a little bit different than the first equation we wrote down on the first example. In this situation, we are told the work done moving the spring. So let's recall first that the work done, because this is a variable force, is going to be an integral. We're going to integrate from some lower bound to some upper bound the force dx. Let me go ahead and write Hooke's Law. So the force is kx and then we integrate with respect to x. Uh, I think at this point, I'll just drop, drop in a and b, representing a feet uh, in relation to equilibrium to b feet. Okay, so let's go ahead now and translate the information we have into this equation. We are told that we need three foot pounds to move the spring from equilibrium, so that's a lower bound of zero, out two feet. So notice here, going from eight feet to 10 feet, in bounds is from zero to two because eight feet is the resting length of the spring. And then we will integrate kx dx. We don't have k, but this equation will allow us to solve for it. So in particular, this is going to be k times x squared over two, plug in our bounds, and we'll have k times nine halves. What, why did I write three? Oh, probably because I saw that three. Let's fix this. Let me fix it in a way that's readable. Okay. Okay, so our bounds are from zero to two. Got my three from over there. Uh, four over two minus zero over two. So that's two K. Now we can solve for K and we know that for this particular spring, the spring constant is three halves. What's the unit? Last time it was Newtons per meter, but that was in SI units. Here it's going to be pounds per foot. Pause again. Now that we know the spring constant, see if you can take the final sentence and turn it into a mathematical equation. Can you determine the work done moving the spring from a length of 10 feet to a length of 12 feet? So the most interesting aspect of setting up the next equation is determining the bounds on the integral that you wanna write down. To finish this problem, we wanna do another work computation. So we're going to set up the work done as an integral of the varying force, which we can now describe as three halves x, where x is the displacement beyond equilibrium, we integrate with respect to x, 
And then the key idea here is to work out what the bounds are. Your first inclination might have been 10 and 12. However, the bounds here need to be in relation to the equilibrium length of the spring. 10 feet long is two feet beyond the spring's resting state. So this lower bound is two. We're starting two feet beyond rest and going out four feet beyond rest. So 10 to 12 is really two feet beyond equilibrium to four feet beyond equilibrium. So that's where those bounds come from. Now we can just anti-differentiate. So this is going to be three halves times x squared over two. Let's plug in our bounds and we'll get three fourths times 16 minus four. That's 12 divided by four is three, multiply by three is nine. What's the unit here? We're working in American units. It's going to be nine foot pounds. I want to finish this lesson by talking about another version of Hooke's Law that you might run across. So what we looked at in this lesson said that the force required to displace a spring by x units is proportional to that spring's amount of displacement. So f of x equals kx, where k is a positive spring constant. That's the force required to displace the spring, but the spring experiences a restoring force. So if you imagine the spring, once you've stretched it out, it has a natural pull to return to equilibrium. That's called the restoring force acting on the spring. To present that type of force, we have a very similar looking equation. We say the restoring force of the spring is proportional to the spring's displacement from equilibrium, but with a negative sign. So it's the same K, but we have that leading negative. Why is it negative? Well, the idea is imagine you have this spring and it has some natural resting length. If you stretch that spring, say that's the positive sense of direction, if you add a sign orientation here, you're stretching it to the right, but the restoring force for the spring wants to go back to the left. So that force is acting in the left direction. On the other hand, if you were to compress that spring, then your restoring force would be pushing you to the right. So that negative sign that you see in the phrasing of Hooke's Law from the point of view of the restoring force is indicating that the restoring force is acting in the direction opposite of the displacement. So I just wanted to mention that in case you are looking at a few different sources and you have these two equations, you understand why they differ by a negative.